The last time I was here, I talked about how we started Lavender Fields at Warrington Manor, and that was in uh, 2002. I want to spend one minute, because I know people are interested in how you start your business, so I'm going to do a little bit of uh, repetition. Um, I met a woman named Pauline Pettit. She was a lavender farmer in Milton, Delaware. And I went out and I wanted to buy plants for my yard because the deer, where I lived in Baltimore, the deer were eating everything. One morning I came out my front door to go to work and a deer was on the front porch eating the wreath on the door. <laughs> and uh, scared both of us. <laughs> anyway, I got some lavender to plant at the house. And um, so then I heard that Pauline was getting married uh, and moving to uh, Australia to grow lavender there, and she did. I went out to tell her goodbye and to buy just a few more plants from her. And she said, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. The deal on my farm fell through yesterday. So my partner, Sharon Harris, looked at me and said, I know we should you know, like, talk. I said, no, we don't need to talk. Pauline, who's your realtor? And we went to Lewis and met with Glenn Piper and signed a contract to buy that farm. Now, I had never done any farming. The last person who, in my either my mother's or my father's side, was a grandfather who was paid not to grow certain things. It was tobacco in southern Maryland. So we didn't have a farming uh, background at all. Sharon and I started this farm. Well, first of all, Pauline had been, I think, a community developer. People came out and they felt better after they were there. The only thing, by the way, I knew how to do when I bought the farm. She had taught me how to go out and buy some white vinegar. We all do that. You have it at your house. You come out to the farm and you get three little stems of lavender that are growing right now in our farm, and you put it in vinegar and put a little, nice little top on it, and this is lavender vinegar. That's what I knew. Well, now, the reason I wanted to come today is that we have really been expanding. And in January of 2015, we bought a soap business. Uh, it's the Soap Ferry, which was a business founded in Lewis, Delaware. They moved it to Milford, and the soap fairy decided he didn't want to do that anymore. It wasn't something that he um, had a lot of interaction with people, and at that point in his life, he changed careers. And he came and said, you know, I've been making soap for you, and I would like you to buy my business. Again, we hadn't planned on doing this at all. We bought his business, and that was a year, almost a year and a half ago. For the first 10 months, we made our soap at Scott's place, he get, the soap fairy. He gave us uh, 10 months of on-the-job training. So now a number of us make soap. One person makes most of the soap. We're making a minimum of about 500 bars of soap a week. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'll pass it around so you all can. I want you to know that this is our best-selling soap. And I'm not, you can tell me why you think it's our best-selling soap. This is just the soap fairy label. And then we have the Lavender Fields label. And I'll start these, just passing them around. Um, so we, we started a soap company. And the big thing about that was Scott's business was about 99% lavender fields and an e-commerce business, shipping soap all over the United States and Canada. So that's what we're doing now. We're, we built on that. We added all of our lavender products that we make at our farm onto the e-commerce site. And it's now at Lavender Fields DE for Delaware dot com. Um, and let me show you some of the, let's see, oh, I, I forgot, to, I don't know how to get this. Oh, you've already put it up there. We're, okay, great, great. So this is, um, this is a little bit of information. And um, let's see, I wanted to show you products so you'll see what we did. Um, and it, it's coming up. We probably have about um, 150 products on our website. And so we're now selling our lavender products where we didn't sell anything online. We didn't really want to interact with anyone online. We wanted to have a really good um, interaction with the people who came to our farm. And when Natalina was talking, uh, in 2012, Sharon and I won an award from the U.S. Small Business Administration for helping women start businesses and support for entrepreneurs who were starting their business. So I'm really proud of that. Uh, that's what I was thinking about yesterday when Natalina came 
to the farm and I thought, oh, this presentation would probably be helpful because she's interested and so that, that's what we try to do. We try to get people to see things a little bit more expansively and uh, my thought is that if I'm not happy living in a garden, in a beautiful garden, then where am I going to be happy? <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing that we used to say, bloom where you're planted. And that's what we're trying to do. We try to get people to come in and do some different things that, they're, that they haven't done before and to get to know more about the agricultural industry here in Delaware. So agritourism is an educational thing for me. Um, we also teach people how to grow lavender. I want to pass my plant around because I want you to smell it. This is, uh, I'm going to start, and it's wet because I got it this morning after it rained. Um, we have about 3,500 plants at our farm, and this is one little tiny one. They, they get as big as three feet. Um, so, so now we're in the e-commerce business, and what we're doing now is we're, and I think this is why Mike asked me to come and talk to you. Our new expansion is that we now have a commercial kitchen on our property, and it's going to allow us to make a food preparation to sell at the farmer's markets. We do seven farmer's markets a week, and our store on the, on, at our farm is open seven days a week. So in a way, we've got 14 days of work there, and we can sell products that uh, require, we would have to have a commercial kitchen to do what we want to do. We're going to have lavender scones, lavender lemon pound cake, and um, lavender lemonade, that, that kind of stuff. Everything has lavender in it. That's our, our real sole thrust of our business. Um, I think, is, have I talked long? Um, okay, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going to open too far. So now I'd like to answer some questions. You've heard a little bit about me. We're, sta we're expanding again, and uh, I'd be happy to answer questions. Good to see you. <laughs> love you. <laughs> Good to see you. I'm so happy. I love Lavender Field Farms. Thank you. Uh, and I know that. And you've been out there a lot, too. A lot. <laughs> because I love it there. We've done workshops there. We've done cancer, breast cancer, um, right. you know, uh, sessions there. Right. Workshops. Workshops Festivals. there. I love the gazebo. I love, um, we had Chrissy Fury had her first tea there. Talk about that building just for a minute. Okay. Where, is that well, where the commercial kitchen is? We moved the train station that was in Lewis, right by the railroad tracks on Kings Highway. We moved that to our farm. Uh, it was purchased by a man named Roland Bradley in Lewis. He didn't know what, where to put it, and his wife said, why don't you go talk to the lavender ladies? So Sharon and and Roland paid to have this train station moved to our farm. We have completed the renovation of the train station, and I think I have a picture of it. I'm going to try to get into my pictures. Let's see. I don't know where the, is that the folder? I'll show you a picture of it. Okay. Let's see. No. I can't remember how to get into the folder. Oh, I know. I'm supposed to minimize. I'm supposed to minimize this. Let me see if I can do it this way. Okay. And let's see. Oh, there it is. Now I can see it. All right, now, slideshow. That's the train station, the one on the lower right. Okay. And let's see if I can remember how to make it bigger. Okay. That is the train station. It's about 16 by 24 feet. And um, the, the uh, left side of the building is the commercial kitchen. The right side of the building is the tea room. 
It's not a restaurant. Uh, we have a caterer, and the caterer will bring uh, just teas and uh, lots of different things that you'd have at a high tea. And we have silverware, little silver, wonderful English and French china, and beautiful tablecloths. So it's an experience that you can have by reservation only. And uh, we like it when you bring your own group to have families do this together. And so that's our new thing that we're doing. Uh, our commercial kitchen has uh, received final uh, permit inspection. So we're going to start that on July 9th. That'll be our first tea. Perfect. So let's talk a little bit about business structure. You purchased the business small. We've certainly grown over. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't buy Lavender Fields business. We bought the, the farm, farm. And, and then we incorporated, the we were an LLC. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a third business partner. Okay. The day Sharon and I went and signed the contract, we had friends to plan to have dinner with, and she had a lot of retail experience. So we asked Mary Ann if she would be our business partner. And she said, I'll do it for a while, but this is not how I'm going to, you know, this is, I'll, I'll help you all out. So the three of us had this business, and uh, we bought her share out about a year and a half ago. Yeah, so it's just Sharon and me now. So now we have for the business structure. So now we have our gift shop, awesome. We have the lavender field, the plants. We have, we have a lot of weddings now. Yes. We, we hired an event planner mm -hmm. because Sharon and I yes. didn't have the skills that it takes to shepherd people through a wedding. And so we have a wonderful person, and uh, she's, she's helping us along. She takes care of all of the wedding uh, business. And that is her pocket. So talk about how you keep all the, from the business perspective. How we keep it together? Yeah, how we keep it separated to make sure that each one is profitable. I don't know. We just do it. I mean, you know, <laughs> we, we start something new and all of a sudden it's like, we used to say, this is like Medusa's head. You know, it's just, it, when we started, we had our business open from uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day. And we would go out the night after Labor Day and celebrate that we had made it through the summer. Well, now we're open year-round. Um, when that first summer, we were so excited because uh, we sold $3,000 worth of profit in three months. I mean, unbelievable, right? Well, <laughs> now it's a lot more. <laughs> um, with our, with our markets in the resort area, we, tourism is a major part of our business. Um, so it, I don't know, I don't have an easy answer to that. I think um, you know, Sharon and I really wanted a place that people would feel comfortable at. We have a lot of people who come out there after they've had an illness and they've survived some terrible things and they, they're starting over. And we have a labyrinth that's the same design and the same scale that's on the floor of Chartres Cathedral. It's not a maze, it's a labyrinth. There's one way in and one way out. It's a half mile if you walk the whole thing. And it's in a circle 42 feet in diameter. A lot of people come to walk the labyrinth to let go of what they want to let go of, walk into the center of the labyrinth, and as they come out on the path, the same path in and the same path, path out, you think about, it just comes that you're walking into the rest of your life. And what do you want to take with you? Uh, we try to get people to sort of appreciate everything it took to get to where the person is and then to really relish in all of the, the, the knowledge that you have and uh, to appreciate the uniqueness of yourself and other people. And that's the mission of our, of our farm. We want people to feel better when they leave our farm mm -hmm. than, than they did when they came down the, the So driveway. I don't hear as much about we're in it for the business as much as it is to help empower people, if yeah. you will. Well, Sharon retired in 1997. I retired in 2009, so I actually commuted back and forth to Washington, D.C. for six and a half years so that we could have enough money to invest in our farm. So we have made an investment from our, I mean, I, I had an IRA that I've gone into because I'd rather look at the beauty in my life than think about money sitting in a bank. You know, I, I just love the idea that the manifestation of beauty has happened in my life. and. Uh, I'm an educator. I worked in uh, education for 42 years. I retired from the U.S. Department of Education. 
Sharon was a manager with the, uh, used to be called the Healthcare Finance Administration, Medicare and Medicaid, and she had an administrative job there. We both had the experience of giving money away. Now, I wasn't giving any of my money, it was your money, and we wanted to make sure the money was used well in the different, either the healthcare profession or in education. So that, that's sort of like an extension of what I'm doing now, and the business has become profitable. It surprises us, um, but we really want to serve the community uh, in a way that helps the community celebrate what it is. This is my last, it's not a question, but it's just a statement that it isn't just people who enjoy coming there. I was there for an event, group of women, probably about 30 or 40 of us, and a skunk came yeah. walking through, <laughs> came walking through, we just kind of parted ways, and, and it was, the, the skunk was walking like, um, don't pay me any attention, I'm just going through. And it was a fat skunk. Yes, yes, <laughs> and, and, and just calmly walked through, we just let her go her way. And I thought, okay. Yeah, we have foxes, we have possums, we have a little bit of everything out there. Thank you so much, Brenda. Thank you. You, you mentioned about the calmingness, um, um, the benefits. Would you please tell us a little bit about the about lavender? About lavender and its pro and its um, lavender is a yes. basal dilator, uh, the essential oil. Um, it takes 200 pounds of lavender flowers. This is a dried, you could pretend this is, this is what we're harvesting right now, and it's beautiful. And I left there today without grabbing the real, you know, the plant with flowers. Anyway, this is uh, what lavender looks like when it's dried. And the other way that you use lavender is essential oil. There's a distillery, and you can get your own oil. Because it takes so much, so many flowers, we import our um, oil from France. Uh, they're pretty careful about what they allow to be exported with the name lavender essential oil. So but that's where we get our oil. And uh, this is a sample. If you put this behind your ears and on your forehead. Um, that's and just, what the skunk wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the skunk didn't spray by. He's just sort of excited with all the people. You know, usually it's pretty calm. We very seldom have gridlock at the lavender farm. But uh, on June 11th, we did have a festival, and we had 514 people on our farm that day. So that was pretty exciting. Well, welcome back, Marie. And I'm Thank you. really glad the business is obviously going as well as it is. Uh, at the Rotary Club the other night, you mentioned that you could take, a, I think, a, a wreath of lavender and even put it on your, as a collar on your dog. Oh, and yeah. It might actually calm the dog I, down I, because I have a hyperactive uh, schnauzer. <laughs> and, uh, well, one of the uh, things that, w the challenge with lavender is it's these two things. It's that little oil and it's dried lavender. And the dried lavender is in this bag. The challenge is how do you package it so that you can use it in so many different ways. Um, this is the lavender, we call it the laundry sachets. You put this in your dryer and your clothes smell like lavender, uh, particularly with those scents. Um, one of the things we were talking about is putting it um, on the, your dog's collar and you would just stuff a little bag like this, a little tiny, much smaller than this, and attach it to your dog collar on the dog's back and it would, help the dog stay a little calm. This is what, I, am, I don't have a dog. I love dogs, but Sharon's allergic to them, so we, we don't have one. But lots of dog uh, owners come in and get this for their dogs. And the stems, these dried stems, we use these stems as mulch in our vegetable garden. It keeps bugs away. And we also use this uh, to help dogs, you, you just put this in their bedding. and. Uh, it calms them down and it makes it smell a lot better. So yeah, we did that with the dogs. Um, this is another type of merchandising. This is an eye pillow. It's filled with flax and lavender. You put it in the microwave for 30 seconds and you put it over your forehead and it calms you down. This is a boo-boo bag and I want you to, to read what's on here. And we also have a little tooth fairy pillow. So you can see we're packaging things. We have uh, another item that's sort of a horseshoe type, and you put it in your shoes, and your shoes smell better. 
So we have the shoe pillows and the eye pillows, and tooth fairy pillows. Packaging um, and selling and merchandising is a major part. And people love to buy this stuff at, at, at the farmer's markets and take it home to their friends who are taking care of their house while they're vacationing here. Also, I, I wanted to comment, uh, maybe you'd already said that while I was drawn away from your, drawn away from your presentation, but you're a living example of giving back. Oh, thank you. And what you've given back to our community, in my opinion, is part and parcel of your entire Thank marketing, you. quote unquote, sales effort. And you certainly have done an awful, awful lot for our community. Thank and you so much. It's a pleasure to hear that. I haven't talked about succession planning. That's a major thing. There's so many old farmers. And what are you going to do? Who's going to inherit the farm? What are you going to do? Uh, I have one grandson, and out of all the different, many sides of the family, he's the only one that's at the least bit interested in this farming thing. He's 15 now, and he came out to the farm a few months ago, and he said to Sharon and me, you know, you all have got to keep this going, because I have to go to graduate school, and I, I can't come here and run this place for another 10 years. So we've, we've been thinking now about what we'll do next. Uh, another idea that people, we have a, fr a lot of friends who are realtors here, and they're selling houses again. Absolutely. A lot of the people buying houses here don't want the house that's on the property, and all they do is demolish it. And so we're thinking about moving a house to the back part of our property. We put in a new septic system back there that will accommodate the equivalent of six bedrooms. Um, so this would be a very small little house, maybe two, two bedrooms. But the idea is it would be a place that Sharon and I could move to when we decide that we can't do this farming and the next generation or whoever the next person is comes and runs the farm. Well, there is something within the, within the near term, we'll call it the rail, what I call the rail trail. Yes. And we're very close to that. You're very close to the rail trail, so I would think that a very good offshoot of this hiking, biking rail trail will be a trip to Lavender Fields right. to bring more and more of potential. Yeah, well, and also people too. have said they they want us to open our home and have a B and B, and I love having people at the farm. The farm is open from 10 to 4 when the store is open, but. I also like it at 6 a.m. in the morning and at 5 o'clock in the afternoon when it's, I could just take a deep breath and just experience the farm for what it is. So now with the idea of moving a house there, maybe we would have a place that we could have as a B&B. &B. Well, thank you for coming. Again. Thank you so much. Right. It's a pleasure. I'd like to make one more comment before we wind things up. Um, when our business instructors went out to your location, uh, you had a young lady by the name of Heather that Heather told, Sullivan. Us, told us the story and explained about lavender. And that added so much value to our trip and we could have a greater appreciation for what we saw and when we went into your wonderful shop there. Do, does she speak on the hour, or does it depend on how many people? I, I on want the people in the audience to know so that when they come to Wednesdays see you, they don't miss at them. 11, we always have a group tour with a discussion that usually goes on for about an hour or so. And then other times, at your request, when you bring a group to the farm. And when you have a tea, uh, I go in and talk for about 15 minutes about our farm and welcome people to the tea. It was truly wonderful. Thank you. So as we conclude, please tell us what can we as a community do to help support you? Well, come enjoy our farm and walk around and uh, look at the flowers that we have. We have a group of gardens that fit a 32 by 160 foot rectangle. And almost everything in that, that garden has been given to us. And what happens is garden clubs have plant sales and sometimes everything doesn't sell. So they'll bring out what didn't sell and we give them a, a lavender plant for the stuff that they're donating to us. And uh, that's how the garden grew. And it was actually laid out by 17 women and one bobcat. And we got to, <laughs> <laughs> we got to uh, grade the property and then put in all these little gardens and walkways uh, with the labyrinth in this one garden that I'm talking about now. 
we used the bricks that were all over the farm. And the farm is only five acres, but on one side, a neighbor raises horses, on the other side, a tree farm. So when you get back in the gardens, it has a much bigger agrarian feel to it. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you, thank you very much for thank coming. You. Looking forward to hear how you grow for the next session. Thank you so much. Thank you.